as E3 is wrap, wrapping up in, uh, in the next couple of days, I find myself kind of reflecting on each and every individual press conference and kind of thinking about what game was really the best game at E3. And for me, that was easily Spider-Man PS4 or Marvel Spider-Man or whatever it's going to be called. It was the Spider-Man game shown off at the Sony press conference. It was easily the best game I've seen in a long time at E3, especially a superhero game. Now, for me, seeing the gameplay made me fantastic, made me ecstatic about the game, about the game's production, about it being released next year, and about Marvel's partnership with Sony, apparently, on this specific game. I am really ecstatic about this game. For starters, the takedowns. Just him swinging in, in the first couple of segments of the, of the gameplay that they showed off at E3, they had him just swinging from cranes and webbing up and, and, and having this stealth system that was pretty similar to Arkham. In fact, a lot of games are kind of based around uh, Arkham style of stealth combat and, and just basic combat with hand-to-hand -hand combat. And Spider-Man's seemed organic and it seemed very Spider-Man-esque in the sense that, yes, there is stealth combat in, in the trailer, but it seemed so Spider-Man, like he, he webbed a guy up, uh, he pulled a guy up to his level, he was on this, uh, this steel pillar, and he webbed a guy up, and he was continuously kind of like spinning him around like a spider, and not necessarily like Batman. Also, there is this really cool gadget takedown, where he shoots a little uh, gadget grenade, or uh, a web grenade, like in actually one of the new Spider-Man Homecoming trailers, where he shoots it on a uh, on part of this uh, on part of this this uh, this crate, and it's kind of like a motion sensor, and it pulls the guy in to the spider web. Then he has all of these environmental kills where he's using where he's using construction equipment to actually take down guys with cranes and and with pillars and it just looked really really good to me and it looked really fluid and also organic it wasn't like he was trying to it wasn't like it was scripted it was it was just there and he used what was there like spider-man does and on top of that he has spider sense and the cool thing about it is that it was so obvious when i first saw it it was just like oh that's spider sense and how it works to me, it looks like whenever, I don't know if you press a button or if there's just a prompt, but it seems like it just immediately wor it works like I would want it to work. It highlights the person that's about to shoot Spider-Man with a gun, and it's kind of like be beyond that, you're kind of left to your own devices. And for them to be able to implement Spider-Sense into the game in that type of way is so cool, as well as the seamless transition from interacting with the environment in a mobile sense and then just fighting people it was very Arkham City-esque. Now I know Arkham City wasn't the best game, but here's some footage of really the mobility that you had around Batman Arkham City. It was just you went from place to place doing things that would better help destroy the Arkham Knight. Or not Arkham City, excuse me, the Arkham Knight, Batman Arkham Knight. But you just went around from place to place doing things that would eventually take him down and it was all seamless and it all happened throughout the city. That's very reminiscent of what I saw at Spider-Man, uh, uh, on this specific Spider-Man game. And then on top of that, you have, I think, one of the biggest criticisms of the game, which to me really isn't a criticism. It's just like a nitpick that people kind of are using against the game and that's QTEs. For me, I, when I was looking at the quick time events, when I was looking at the QTs, for starters, it made Spider-Man seem like a superhero. It made him seem like he was an actual superhero that saved New York City on a daily basis. Especially when he underwent all of that uh, QTE interaction with the, uh, with the crane, and then it just jumped him back into just swinging around like Spider-Man. The QTEs seem great, they seem seamless. Would I have QTEs in a game? Yes, if they were cool. And these QTEs are very cool. Give them their credit on that. And on top of that, the creative director for Spider-Man, for the new Spider-Man game, even said, 
the game's gonna be mostly open world, and here and it's on Kotaku. I'll link the article in the description. But I'm, this isn't a, di a direct quote. This is just a paraphrase. He said, the "Game will mostly be open world exploration and acrobatic combat, rather than QTE written story scenes." That was the creator, creative director from Somniac saying that the game wouldn't be riddled with QTEs in their game. So you now know that the game won't have QTEs. And even though the game has QT, or, or you now know that the game won't be so heavily bombarded with QTEs. Or now you know that the game won't heavily be bombarded with QTEs, but it will have QTEs in them. Plus the QTEs are actually really, really cool, in my opinion. Now on top of that, now on top of that, you have Spider-Man. For me, I've played a lot of Spider-Man games. I'll give you the list. I'll give you the list of how many Spider-Man games I've played. In fact, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I'll give you the list. The list is, and I wrote it, and I had to write all these games down because they're numerous. Ultimate Spider-Man on the DS, it was when you kind of transitioned from Spider-Man to Venom, and it was a really weird game. I played it when, when I was, I almost played that game like 10 years ago. Spider-Man on the PS2, not to be confused with Spider-Man, I think on the PS1, which was based off of the popular TV show. And they also made another Spider-Man game. I think it was also called Spider-Man 2 that was also based off the TV show. Not to be confused with Spider-Man 2 that was based off of the Tobey Maguire movie. Now, then you have The Amazing Spider-Man on the PS3. You have Spider-Man 2 on the GameCube, which was the one based off of the movie. Spider-Man uh, Shattered Dimensions, which was about him interacting with different versions of Spider-Man. It was, or I think it was kind of like different timelines. You had the Spider-Man 2099, you had Spider-Man Noir, you had Spider-Man, uh, you had the Venom Suit Spider-Man, and then you had The Amazing Spider-Man. And you also have Spider-Man Web of Shadows, which is when New York City was being overrun by Venom and Spider-Man had to make decisions. And depending on his decisions, they would either uh, be kind of good morally or bad morally. And you could also switch between the Venom Spider-Man suit as well as the Amazing Spider-Man suit. And then finally, you have Spider-Man Friend or Foe. So I've played a lot of Spider-Man games in the course of really 20 years, which is my life. And I've never really seen Spider-Man be able to be as as mobile as he is in the game. And it seems to me, all of this seems, like all of the on-screen footage to me, seems like it's player controlled, that it's not QTEs. Is there buttons, are there button prompts that kind of have him getting to, that, uh, that act as like, as him getting to places? Absolutely. But him wall running on a side of a building, him going through, that building that the helicopter had used uh, a generator to crash into. All of that seems seamless to me. And then, like in the trailer last year, and like in the trailer this year, they had this section of him running through a building. And last year, I was just like, that seems kind of scripted, but this year, you could see him kind of try and move and try and be mobile through some of these scenes. And it seems to me like it's very, very seamless. And I was really really shocked i will say this when i saw all of this footage i was very shocked you know the qtes they don't bother me whatsoever because there's so much more gameplay with the game that i feel like the qtes they don't really matter as much as you would think and on top of that again you have the creative director saying that it it won't be a, a uh, hang on that it won't be qte written story scenes so I'm I'm pleasantly surprised with Spider. I was I was very surprised with Spider-Man PS4. I'm very surprised about how great of a job Insomniac is doing, has has done with Spider-Man PS4. And I'm also very surprised that a lot of people are saying that it's QTE ridden and that the only thing that they showed off was the QTEs and and that the game seems very scripted because of the QTEs when there's tons of gameplay to show to prove that it's not. But for me, Spider-Man PS4 won E3. Spider-Man PS4 was easily the best game at E3. And I'm very excited for it to come out in 2018. And I'm very excited to see more gameplay about it. Because to me, this seems like one of the best Spider-Man games we've seen in a long time, if not ever. This has been 24. Remember to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe for more. I will post a video tomorrow, but it will be just a link just to tell you I'm streaming tomorrow.
and I'll have my Twitch channel tomorrow up in the description. Look forward to that. I will be streaming from 2 to 6, that's 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, tomorrow, 2 6 Central Standard Time. Until tomorrow, have a fantastic day. I'll see you next.